This week's Four Questions Journalist Spotlight is brought to you by Lefts Atlanta Media, Atlanta's best journalist database. Subscribe at leftsatlantamedia.com. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of our Four Questions Journalist Spotlight. We are talking today with Maya Ellinger with Hypotamus. And uh, I want to give Maya a chance first to tell a little bit about her background and what Hypotamus is all about, because it is kind of a unique publication in Metro Atlanta. But uh, good afternoon, Maya. Hi, hi, great to be here. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So give me a little background first. Let's see, should we, do, let's do the, what is Hypotamus first? Sure, right. yes. Right. So Hypotamus has been around for, for a while now, um, and we have kind of a great history in the city of Atlanta and around the Southeast, covering tech startups, entrepreneurship, and the innovation economy. So what does that mean, kind of the venture capital landscape, um, anyone that is building tech startups in town. Um, It's a very busy time. It's been quite a year for tech startups in the Southeast, both from a a funding side, um, some exciting exits, some exciting raises, um, and in general, uh, the innovation economy here in town as more and more technology companies move into town. Um, so yeah, that's what we cover. Uh, we're very focused, hyper-focused on the Southeast um, and, and how we can really help uh, spread the news about founders uh, in, the, in the tech scene. So uh, I, I, you know, we were talking before we came, before we started taping about pronouncing your name correctly, but hypotamus, is it hypopotamus or hypotamus? Hypopotamus. Hypopotamus, okay. Yes. Like, so, like, uh, hi, our- like, like hyper. Like hyper, yeah. hyp, hypo, hypopotamus. And you'll notice our logo is a hippopotamus. So right. we're just hyping up. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I think I had in my head kind of taking out a syllable or something there. Hypopotamus. Okay. Got it, right. A lot of people just call it hype. Also, also. Oh, easy. there you go. There you go. Or potamus. Yeah, I'm talking, talking yeah. to the potamus. Yeah. Uh, well, what's, what's your background and how long have you been running the publication? Yeah, so I joined Hype uh, June, uh, July of 2020, so right in the middle of the pandemic, uh, which was kind of a fun story. But uh, a little bit about me, uh, ending up at Hype is, is kind of feels like a, a serendipitous situation in a way, um, because my if I go back to my very first uh, journalistic uh, experience, uh, it was actually pretty entrepreneurial. My freshman year at college, I was over at Emory. And I got uh, a job that still kind of is a dream job, uh, kind of the job that I've always wanted uh, my freshman year. And that was to help start an online um, uh, publication for uh, for Emory students. And so we we launched a kind of startup news uh, network for for Emory students. So I came in as the editor, producer, writer, uh, sometimes host. Um, of this 60 second news show. At the time it was really innovative. Um, We were kind of, this was 2010 time. Uh, We were using Instagram to kind of share the news of campus. We were doing YouTube shows um, to to reach students um, and prospective students across campus. So uh, from the very beginning, kind of my entrepreneurial, uh, uh, my my journalistic journey uh, has kind of had this uh, like, uh, element of entrepreneurship yeah. to it, launching. So yeah, that was the beginning. Um, in between then, I actually worked at a couple of startups, uh, freelanced around. I've been able to work at everywhere from CNN International to smaller publications, um, and then got the call if I wanted to join Hype. And it felt like a perfect mix of my love and my background in startups and uh, my, my love of writing. Uh, yeah, when I was an Emory student, we had we had the Emory wheel in print, mm-hmm. no no tech or anything, no online, and we had uh, we did briefly have an an Emory radio station. Okay, uh, but you had a you had a plug in. It was like a plug in, so uh-huh. you can get it like through the electrical network somehow. So you plugged it in, then you can tune into the station. It wasn't like it was over. It wasn't over the air. Very, well, you can nice. still go on to Emory's YouTube channel and check out Emory 360. I think some of the episodes are, are you know, they're still pretty fun to watch. Um, and we got to highlight some pretty cool things that were happening around campus. Okay. So let's see. So uh, you, obviously, uh, you, you guys are daily. Is that correct? 
Yes, yeah, we, we publish stories daily and we put out a newsletter twice a week. Okay, and how would you, how would you differentiate your coverage from what the Business Chronicle or anyone else in town is doing? Sure. You know, for us, our focus is, um, you know, we want to be the go-to source for all things startup. And so for us, that means we uh, we really love to do in-depth profiles on the startups and entrepreneurs uh, that are in town, um, kind of going beyond the, the funding news, if you will. Uh, funding news is always great, but we want to be able to highlight the entrepreneurial journey um, and whether or not someone goes for VC funding or not. Um, you know, for us too, we always, our job board is free and open for startups to um, publish their um, uh, open positions on. Uh, for us, it's really important. Uh, we want to be able to be a, a community source for people that are looking to plug in more to the uh, innovation ecosystem here in town. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've personally gotten messages from people saying they landed their first job uh, off of the hype board. And so, uh, you know, for us, uh, being a community driven publication, uh, and kind of going beyond the press release and the headlines, um, to really understand what's, what's going on here in Atlanta and the Southeast, um, that's kind of our bread and butter. So you said Atlanta and the Southeast. So are you, is that, is it kind of, that kind of geographic focus kind of, if there's any kind of news in the Southeast, it would be under your, your umbrella? Yes, yes. We cover the whole Southeast. Um, of course, I'm in Atlanta, so I have a little bit better of a view here. Um, but there's quite a few uh, incredible startups, uh, particularly when you look at Birmingham, uh, Nashville, and the Research Triangle. Um, so also highlighting kind of the entire regional focus. So if, uh, if someone has got an idea, they've got a startup, they want to be kind of part of the hype magic, uh, how, do they, how do they reach out to you? What's yeah, the way? absolutely. Uh, um, definitely uh, email, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I can be very easily found. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. My yeah. name, I, I am pretty sure I'm the only person in, the, in uh, only person with uh, on all of those platforms with my name. With, with that particular name. Huh? With that particular name. <laughs> that that particular combination, right? <laughs> yes, name and spelling. So I should be pretty easy to reach. Um, on email, I'm just Maya, M-A-I-J-A at hypopotamus.com. Um, but yes, what we really love to do is, is hear from early stage startups um, in the tech world. Um, uh, an important differentiator, I will say, uh, I should have mentioned earlier, love small businesses. They're great. Um, we don't really focus on that. We really focus on kind of that, that high tech um, and that tech piece of, of a startup. But if you, if you have one, if you are, uh, if you have an idea that you're growing, uh, would, would love to chat. Well, as I always, always, always tell people, if you're, if you're not sure about whether your story is a fit for a publication, read the publication first, right? <laughs> that is great advice. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they don't write about women. Do I, I have a women's hair care product. Should I call Maya about it? Maybe if you're I mean, a startup, I, maybe. I'm, I'm personally interested, but uh, <laughs> probably can't write about it. <laughs> uh, are there... Uh, are there certain topics that you that you uh, are following or, or looking to follow kind of in the in the near future? Yeah, I think there's there's kind of two buckets, really three buckets of, of stories that I'm really interested in. Um, one, I'm always looking for uh, clean tech and energy tech startups. Um, there's a great momentum we're seeing here in the southeast. So um, any kind of uh, stories along that line. One thing that I'm really interested in is um, following what corporate innovation means for the city of Atlanta. Uh, of course, we're having, you know, the, the Googles and the Microsofts and the Airbnbs move in. Um, and, and I really want to uh, kind of understand what that means for, for the city and what it means for corporate innovation in general. So if anyone, um, I've I've been able to, to pick people's brains over the last couple of weeks to try to see that, but I'll put it out to viewers. Uh, would, would love to chat more on, on that topic as well. How, how much of a lead time do you usually have? Are you, are you kind of planning a couple of weeks ahead of someone, someone says, oh, great, this, they got this announcement coming up tomorrow. Is it, you'd be like, crap, I wish they'd let me know about this a week ago. 
Well, I mean, I, I know the nature of, of announcements sometimes. I mean, I get them the day before. Sometimes it's obviously for, for me not ideal. Um, I enjoy, uh, you know, getting some sleep before sending out uh, the newsletter. But, um, you know, I, I typically, I like to plan a week in advance. Um, I will always have room for stories that are kind of shorter um, uh, in time frame. So uh, I'm, I'm willing to work on a lot of different, a lot of different deadlines. But of course, you know, if, if I've got a week, it gives me some time to, to actually uh, put some, put some heart and, and, you know, uh, kind of really round out the reporting in the way that, that I would like to. Yeah. Okay. No, good. Good. I, I always encourage people to, to do that, to plan ahead a little bit and not be throwing something out there and saying, Hey, I've got this announcement tomorrow and y'all should come because it's really important. And I know I didn't give you any notice, but you should do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I will say, um, yeah, our newsletter goes out Wednesday mornings and Friday mornings. Uh, we have a, a pretty big event section. So if, if there's a community event, um, you know, be, be sure to send it a couple of days before so I can make sure we, we pop it in there. But yeah. And, and you would think people aren't planning their events the, the day before, right? They, they've probably spent weeks planning or months planning this event. And all of a sudden <laughs> they think, Hey, I should send this out to somebody. So they know about it tomorrow. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So thinking about the, the different sections of, of, uh, of hype, are there, so are there any sections we haven't talked about? Kind of talked about the job section, general news section. Uh, yeah. Job, uh, general news event section. Yeah. That's kind of our bread and butter. Okay. I will say, yeah, you, uh, yeah we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do kind of the, the news portion and then kind of the longer profile pieces as well. Right. Okay. All right. So, so now the really challenging question that people always have trouble with is what's something cool or fun about you that people might not know about? And that could be a, a hobby or talent and things you collect, you know, something, something kind of fun about Maya. Um, well, there's something that probably not a lot of people will know in Atlanta. Uh, so I did, I did not grow up here, but, um, been here for 13 years. Um, people around me know I'm, I'm pretty athletic. I uh, do a lot of running, tennis, I played softball, soccer, all that. Um, but not a lot of people know that um, I am a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Um, I, I haven't done it in a while, but um, that's still uh, still part of who I am, I guess. Uh, but I, yeah. I'm sure the muscle reflex will will kick in, right? Yeah, if I ever if I ever wanted to come back to it, but I, so so whenever really someone someone messes with you, they get they get to get it right. <laughs> haven't had right. To, haven't had to fight. Just yeah, no. that's, but you know, but it's it's good to be prepared, right? <laughs> for for men and women um, as they're out and about. Um, all right, so the the lightning round here is uh, I'll give you a choice: the last book you've read or the last podcast you've listened to that you want to talk about. Um, I uh, just finished a really great book um, called How to Sell Poison, um, which is a kind of a history of, of uh, environmental history of DDT in, in America. So it's kind of a downer of a book, but really very good. <laughs> but, but good. That's important. But That's very, important. Very That's, informative. It's, it's a huge industry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Favorite local restaurant. Oh, this is a very hard, uh, lots of great places, but I'd have to say my most frequented spot is probably Top Spice. Over at Toko there? Yeah, over in yeah, Toko. Yeah, that's great. I love that place. Uh, favorite guilty pleasure? Um, my favorite guilty pleasure is definitely popcorn. Um, popcorn in a good book is just, <clears throat> I, I can't think of anything better. <laughs> at local, local getaway? Um, recently, I've been going, uh, I've, I've gotten a chance to go up to Chattanooga a couple of times, and, and that's a perfect little little weekend getaway for friends, family, and all that. And I've run into a lot of Atlantans the, the last couple of times I've been there. So I think, <laughs> I think it's not just my weekend getaway spot. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's far enough away to be really away, and but it's only two hours away or so. Uh, okay, favorite non-work hobby? Uh, I love baking. Um, that's something that I, I try to do uh, as much as I can. It's my stress relief. Uh, it's, it's, uh, as my friends know, I drop off a lot of baked goods to them. I, don't know. <laughs> I think that they appreciate it. I don't know if they always do. Hence the <laughs> running and tennis and uh, lots of sports, right? 
Got to balance, work, it, out. balance <laughs> it out. That's right. What, what's what's your go to baking thing? Is your cookies, cakes? What do you what do you what's your favorite? I love cakes. Um, my favorite thing to make uh, now that I've perfected it is uh, have you had like a Portuguese egg tart? I'm not sure if I have. No, oh, they're they're very good. Um, uh, and those are those are kind of my favorite thing to to make right now. But I, I love uh, experimenting <clears throat> and, and what, trying new recipes. <clears throat> what's the what's the hardest thing? Is there something like that was really really hard to make? Uh, the egg charts are pretty yeah. hard, but um, can I um, hardest thing I've done? I uh, I attempted baklava. It's actually not. As easy <laughs> as it would be. Um, Let's get all those get all those layers. I mean, I, yeah. I, I would think that'd be very complicated. So um, it took me a couple it took me a couple of tries, but um, I don't know. For me, experimenting with baking is 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 fun. So as long as you have friends and neighbors who are willing to be the experimental tasters, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> I don't need to be left with the whole cake. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Excellent. Well, Maya, thank you. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about about hype, hype that we uh, that we should talk about? Talk, kind, of, kind of give a good overview of it. Anything? Uh, anything in? Uh, let's see this. Anything in the ne in next week's issue that people should be looking out for? Uh, we've got some cool fintech stories coming out. Um, uh, Atlanta is pretty known for for its financial technology yeah. uh, space, but um, it's it, for me it's exciting to see that uh, fintech is. There's there's a growing number of fintechs that are that are thinking about equity uh, when it comes to uh, accessing credit, accessing uh, banking, um, and all of those sorts of things. So um, I think that's kind of an interesting trend. But um, yeah, if uh, I will, I'll leave people with please subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, it's free, uh, and you know we try to be as informative uh, and and keep you in the loop of all things uh, startups. Ooh, let's let's say the let's say the website a couple of times. Spell it, and and I, I'll put it in the in the notes and everything. But tell tell everybody what the website is. Oh yeah, so it's just hypopotamus.com. Um, and so the spelling, hopefully you can <laughs> uh, you can put up, but it's h y p e p o t a m u s dot com. Uh, you, you know, you'll find us when you see the little um, hippo uh, awesome. logo. Yeah, and they'll see, and they'll see you too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Maya. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes with us this morning. And uh, again, this has been another edition of our Four Questions Journalist Spotlight. Check check back every Sunday ish, unless I'm camping or outside somewhere. In, the, in which case, I'm not going to do it. Um, and as always, look for. Our media database, leftsatlantamedia.com, and our media matching service, mitchesmediamatch.com, uh, on an internet near you. Thanks, Maya. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs>